So we're here with Shannon Delaney, a, a woman who we actually owe a lot, a lot. The sub world, the foil world, the sport world, the channel crossing world. There is so much legacy by now and, and we all owe it to her, putting out so much work every year. And now we have arrived definitely in a new era of this sport being now foiling, which has, I want to say, almost forced you to make changes. Yeah, to the race. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit about how did that come all about and, and the backstory of having now, having to have two events, a new start line and a new finish line and, and a new everything. Yeah, before the pandemic in 2018 and 2019, a lot of our SUP, regular SUP athletes switched over to foil. So it was a natural progression. A lot of these our local athletes were definitely making that transfer. So the demand was there. Of course, we embraced it because, you know, that's kind of who we've been all along. I mean, we went from prone to stand up to foil. And then on our return back to the channel last summer, we started realizing just the momentum behind it and to recognize that momentum and that growth and all the community concerns and just having a super safe race. The natural evolution was to be able to dedicate a, a day to foil. Um, so definitely new for us. It's super exciting to be able to engage the athletes, give them a platform at this race and also sort of help to find what's next, you know, for the Kaivi channel and their, mm -hmm. and their crossing. So that's the exciting part. I am pretty sure you didn't just go ahead and say, like, oh yeah, let's just throw in another race. Let's make two races this year because it's yeah. just all so easy. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges that you were facing leading up to today? Yeah, for sure. I think I think let's recognize some of the challenges from last year's race. Um, you know, you have three divisions or three, you know, three sports. One going off at 7.30 in the morning, one going off at 8, and one going off at 10.30 with the hopes of everybody converging on Oahu at the same time, right, for safety reasons. So to be able to cover that race safety, to be able to cover that race media-wise, right, you can't be everywhere at once in the channel. Mm -hmm. So that was the natural progression. Um, doing a double weekend was huge. What was really big for us this year was to have the community accept an additional race date. And, you know, foil was a natural progression, but for uh, in order for us to do it safely under the consent you know under the sensitivities of the communities that we that we affect we definitely needed that that day um so we have joined up with maui to molokai at the molokai holokai and we've also engaged with um paddle mua which has been a really great opportunity to be able to create a downwind opportunity where athletes are coming in from all over the world and they've got 10 days as long as they want to be here but they've got 10 great days of mm -hmm. racing right three days within 10 um so that's that's the goal um it'll elevate all of our events It'll engage a, a broader community and just start to bring a little bit more downwind opportunity for these athletes. Anything you want to stress in particular that you want to have people to hear out there? Nothing huge. I think the biggest thing is, you know, for the athletes that are here, let's engage with the community. Let's leave it better than we than we found it. Um, you know, there's just some great opportunity and this channel and these races mean so much to so many. Um, that's huge. But for the audience that's also watching the race, you know, it's it's one of those things where I'm sure, Mike, you can attest to it. We have so many demands on this race outside of the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. And so I know, you know, we're trying to elevate our game as well. And it really is going to take um, it's going to take a community and athletes and an industry to really kind of define what's next. You know, we're going to try to put as much updates and be as fast as we can on the recovery with results and footage but you know I think where the joy is with the foil event because it's so fast is all the post-race edits so you know bear with us as we start to kind of grow into those into our feet you know into our shoes that we're wearing at the moment very cool very fluid moment and we're going to finish this video with a big thank you to Shannon and with three statements from some very OG people out in the channel sounds like it's the best it's ever been uh, you know start in the wind pretty much end in the wind um, it's longer instead of 32 miles it's 40 miles and you know everyone's really fast now pretty much the top 20 are all pretty tight and then the top five are even you know tighter right up there so it's it's probably some of the most competitive open ocean racing that i've ever done and it's what it's all about 40 mile sprint race basically yeah, they're doing their best to try to accommodate us and make it safe and you know wing foil sup foil plus escort boats there's a few different Bits and pieces, a lot of people were complaining about getting washed out by the boats, the escort boats. So they got a few protocols to sort of keep us all safe and to, to mitigate that, that issue. Um, there's still going to be people who get unlucky with a boat in front, of, in front of them. It's just, you know, with 100 people foiling and 100 escort boats, they, the escort boats can't disappear. Finish line good. I think that it's a good, good protocol having the escort boats out, out wide so that they're not mucking up that inside bit people come down or people who maybe need a bit of extra boat wash they might help so it's like it's pros and cons to boat wash and that situation they've tried to eliminate that by having it out wide 
um, the finish. They're kind of covering all bases. It's good. Yes, it's pretty cool to see the new era. A lot of talent, young talent, new sport. This is awesome. Can't wait for tomorrow.